Welcome back everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program release 1.0.5. Now it has been a couple of weeks since my last episode so I thought we'd best have a bit of a recap. Now you can see in front of you uh, Minmus Station 1, our uh, first orbital station. Uh, we have been constructing this station from uh, USI uh, Umbra Space Industry Parts. You can see here at the top we have a colony command center and we have a habitation ring rotating here at the bottom. And this was part of a contract that we had to put a station around Minmus. So um, we've completed that contract uh, by having uh, the relevant number of uh, Kerbal spaces available on the station. We don't actually have that many Kerbals. We have Bill and Valentina at the moment. But I thought it would be a good idea to see if we could make this station somewhat self-sufficient. So to that end, we have an agroponics module here about to be docked. So that's the step we're going to do next. So let's just pop over to the agroponics module uh, or aeroponics module. We have here at the top the actual uh, aeroponics module itself, which converts mulch, the waste products that our uh, Kerbals uh, produce, and turns them into organics, which can subsequently be created or turned into life support materials. And below, we have ourselves an inflatable module, which is going to be our greenhouse. So it's about time, I think, we get this thing docked up. So uh, let us just get right down here and uh, let's, uh, well, first things first, let's control from here. Uh, where are we? Control from here. And then when we undock, so let's, uh, oh, it's not an undock at the bottom here. We've got a little separator. So let's just decouple. There we go, decouple. So uh, there we go. We've jettisoned uh, the lower uh, transfer module. We'll get rid of that a little bit later. So this is where we're aiming for. Uh, we're aiming uh, to get it underneath this module right here. So there is a docking port. So I don't know if we can, uh, if I just change vessels, if I click that docking port and then go back, uh, no, we're just out of range in order to use the uh, setter's target trick. So I think it's about time we get our RCS on and uh, let's get ourselves over towards our target vessel. So we want to get down a bit, I think, uh, and then uh, get across. So which, uh, which direction uh, should we be going in? There we go. Let's move ourselves across towards our target. So we've got uh, 300 uh, meters or so to go. And when we get in range, we will set our docking port as target. So there we go, we've got uh, 290 odd meters to go. Can we reach it yet? Not quite. So let's still just keep moving on towards our target. So we're coming a little bit below our target now. So let's rotate ourselves around a little and start moving towards our target. We get a little bit low so let's uh, Bring ourselves up slightly. I can just about make out the docking port there. No target, come on. Okay, we need to get a little bit closer. There we go, set as target. So we've now got that set as target. We can bring up our docking port alignment indicator and uh, we can start uh, rotating ourselves so we get our orientation correct. 
There we go. So we get the. Oh, turn the wrong way. And get the first orange marker inside our crosshairs. We're going a little bit fast. So let's see if I can't slow down a little bit. There we go. Slow down a little. And we need to bring ourselves below our target port. There we go, we're below our target port. And now we need to start maneuvering towards our target. There we go. So we're about 100 meters to go. Now let's get ourselves uh, rotated as well while we're moving towards. That's this little marker down here at the bottom. Uh, wrong way around, so we need to be all the way around the other way. There we go. A bit too far. There we go. Relative velocity is, is, is tiny. Where are we? We're right up here in the corner. Let's just get rotated round so we can see where we're going. And we basically want to draw this crosshair up towards the centre. Let's just correct our orientation a little. There we go. Coming up underneath our target now. Here we go, coming up. Got it aligned. Got the uh, rotational axes sorted quite nicely. 17 meters from our target is our target destination. And we're slowly coming towards our target. Now what it needs to do is go straight up. We're directly below our target now. So target velocity 0.23 of a meter. So you can see there target velocity is 0.2. And you can also see that we're moving towards our target because we've now got the different kind of crosshair in here. So we're pretty much all lined up, just a matter of drifting gently towards our target node. So 14 meters to go, there we go. Target distance between the actual nodes is 10 meters. Just gently drifting up towards our target. Ten meters to go. Everything's still all lined up. Soon the magnetism will start to take over as we get very, very close to our nodes. There we go, six meters. I think, there we go, magnetism's taken over. And thump. <laughs> yeah, it's always a bit of a thump uh, when uh, those two nodes come together. The magnetism between these docking nodes is quite considerable. But that's a good start. That is an excellent start uh, to this episode. We've managed to get our aeroponics module uh, attached, so let's get our inflatable inflated, so let's deploy our inflatable, there we go, so we've now got uh, a greenhouse module attached to our aeroponics module, so we should now be able to start up the greenhouse, uh, so let's have a look, start the greenhouse, and the greenhouse will take, uh, will take the mulch and start generating uh, some organics uh, for us. Uh, so some organic materials which we can later turn into life support. Now 
One of the things I don't think I've mentioned before is exactly how the different hard and inflatable modules relate together. Now, as a general rule, uh, inflatable modules increase the efficiency of their associated hard module. So in this case, the greenhouse uh, increases the efficiency, this inflatable greenhouse, uh, increases the efficiency of the aeroponics greenhouse module. Now, the inflatable increases the efficiency of the habitat module, the curbitat, and it's the curbitat that takes life support, uh, or rather takes organics and turns them into life support. So that is what we're going to bring up next. Now, as I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, in order to complete the cycle between mulch and organics and life uh, support, life support supplies, we're going to have to bring up a Kerbitat module. So let's start by loading up, uh, where we go, let's start by loading up our previous craft, which is the uh, aeroponics uh, module. So let's just load that in. Uh, so there you see it, <laughs> there you see it, deflating before our eyes. So let's just take off the uh, fairing. So this was the vehicle we sent up uh, a few moments ago. So you see there's the inflatable agriculture module and the aeroponics module on the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace, re replace, we're going to replace this section in here just with the curbitat. So the first thing we're going to do uh, is change the root part to be uh, this cap section up here at the top. Uh, so you can see I've grabbed the cap section. So now I can rip off these other sections. So let's let's just save this bottom section here. Let's rip off the agriculture module. Let's rip off the aeroponics module and go and find ourselves the uh, Kerbitat. Uh, so the Kerbitat is a hard module. Uh, which goes with the habitat module in order to convert uh, organics into life support supplies. So this is going to be our uh, this is going to be our basic launch vehicle. But we just need to finish off a few extra bits and pieces. Now we don't have any radiators. Uh, we don't have any uh, radiators on our existing craft. So let's have a look for. Uh, uh, these are the small ones, they are actually quite small, uh, probably only useful for probes, and yet the large ones are rather enormous. Uh, so we'll go for the medium ones, uh, the medium uh, panels, so let's just put those in there. So what these are going to do is just dissipate any uh, heat build-up uh, from our craft. Don't know if they're entirely essential for a craft of this type, but we will have them anyway. So that's going to be our radiators instead of the solar panels that we have been using up until now. So that's got that done. Uh, so that's probably the majority of the parts we need to organize for this vehicle. Uh, but what we do need to do is just check on our RCS uh, just to make sure... What are we missing? We need to check. <laughs> we need to check on the top part of the craft's RCS. So let's just grab hold of the stack decoupler. There we go. Uh, so we can see that we have a 0.095 kilonewton um, slight rotation. It's so slight you can't really see any. Uh, we can't see any circle in here showing an angle of rotation. So that's probably going to be just fine. Uh, ripping off. Uh, these um, we had the gigantor panels on there and replacing them with the thermal control system hasn't upset the balance of our craft too much so that's actually going to be I think it's going to be pretty much okay for RCS uh, management so we can click off the RCS build aid we need to reconnect our launch stage and we also need to put back on uh, we also need to put back on our egg-shaped fairing, but I'm just worried it's not. I'm just worried it's not going to fit quite right. It looks quite tight, but let's go and put the uh, the fairings on. Uh, just go egg gives us our egg-shaped fairing. There we go, egg-shaped fairing. Grab, and if we now connect that up, I think that's a bit chubby, but I can't see it leaking through anywhere. So it's a bit chubby, but I think that'll do just fine. So let's just correct our staging. So let's get our four parts of our fairing and bring them 
up to uh, probably up there. So we've got um, we've got our two orange liquid fuel booster stages we've got here on the outside. We've then got our transfer stage here in the middle, and then tucked away in here we have our uh, Kerbitat uh, Mark One. So let's save the Kerbitat Mark One, and uh, we will rejoin this vessel when we arrive at Minmus. We rejoin our Kerbitat just as it has arrived in Minmus's sphere of influence. Uh, now we can see here is our newly renamed Minmus Station 1. This is the target that we would like to rendezvous with. So you can see that our periapsis is well uh, below altitude, with the altitude should be about 100 kilometers. So we'll have to fix that. Uh, and we'll also notice that we are not currently on the equatorial planes. We need to fix that as well. So let's go and put a maneuver node out here somewhere. And let's just uh, raise up, there we go, just raise up our periapsis. I think that's more or less on the equator now. And we also need to bring it out. So let's use the radial marker to bring it out. So let's just double check how that's doing. That looks pretty good. 97 probably needs to come out uh, a little bit further. So let's go in very small chunks. Uh, 100, there we go. And we've, uh, we've come a little bit below again. So let's bra uh, braise. Let's raise that up. Go in slightly bigger chunks. There we go. So that looks more or less on the right plane, but it is now slightly too far out. So let's come back in again. A few clicks there, 103, 102, uh, and 100. Let's click it down just the one more for luck. There we go. Uh, that is 100. So let's um, let us now execute that maneuver. But before I do that, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down the thrust limiter to about 10%. There we go. About 10. There we go. Because we are going to be executing some very small maneuvers, and this large uh, skipper engine will find it very difficult to do that accurately. So let's bring down the thrust limiter in order to make that. A little easier. Now having done that we can bring out our KOS script and run our handy execute node script and that is going to execute in about an hour and ten minutes time uh, so uh, we've got a while before we execute this four second burn so let's just get that one lined up. Uh, so let's just maneuver ourselves around to the blue maneuver marker there we go So that's pre-aligned, ready to go. And what we're going to do, go into map mode and uh, warp to maneuver node. So that'll give us a three minute warning, a three minute margin. Plenty of time just to double check that we are properly aligned and plenty of time for our script to execute, which is going to start its primary task of alignment at one minute and two seconds so we can time warp a little bit further forward we've still got uh, a minute and uh, well about a minute and 30 to go so let's just bring that forward so down to one minute 30 there we go bring the time warp down again and we should see the maneuver node. there you go just just start uh, moving as the script kicks into action and then it will actually carry out the burn um, at two for four seconds. Uh, my script is able to calculate the estimated burn based on the exact uh, engine settings and delta V. The nav ball's approximation is not currently set. So we've got 30 odd seconds to go. So let's just time warp forward until we get to about 10 seconds. There we go. So five seconds. 
and the burn should start now, there we go. And there we go, just one, not even one, exactly zero delta V remaining. So that was a very, very uh, well executed, uh, well executed node. Now the next step is to rendezvous with Minma Station 1 and I'm going to try and combine uh, that step with the capture burn. So I'm going to try and do everything in one step. So that's going to be uh, going to be a bit of a challenge but we like a challenge. So the first thing I think we're going to do is just set our, there we go, set our final uh, final inclination to as near as zero as possible. Let's bring this around as well. There we go. So we can see we have an intersection already, uh, but we are at quite a, quite, a, quite, an alt, uh, quite an altitude, quite an incline. So we're going to have to fix that. So let's continue fixing that until our ascending and descending nodes flip around. 0.6, is that the closest I'm going to be able to get it? Because we're not actually on our ascending and descending nodes, so it's actually not ideal to be doing this manoeuvre. How far we can go? 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, so we're probably around there. Now the next thing we can try, uh, the next thing we can try is setting our, uh, let's make sure, setting our maneuver so that we can uh, that we can get an intersection so let's try doing that by changing the uh, radial settings let's go around this way there we go so we can see we got these orange and purple markers let's see if we can get them to line up there we go look at that 5.5 kilometers for these two markers can we get it any better? 1.8, just overdid it slightly. 4.8, I think this is where precise node is going to come in handy. 0.9, uh, 0.9 is actually pretty good, uh, even without precise node. But let's see if using precise node we can make it any better. So that's the wrong way. It's 0.9, 1.4. 2.7, I don't think we're actually going to make it any better. Let's go back the other way. There we go, what's that? 0.8, that's actually pretty good. I like that. 0.8, if we can get our intersection to be at 0.8 of a kilometre, just 800 metres, um, that's pretty good. So we have our manoeuvre set. Uh, we have our intersection, our rendezvous set. It's going to be 141 meters per second, uh, 18 second burn. Uh, so let's uh, run our node script, see if that agrees. Uh, we have 141 seconds, but it's going to be a total of 35 second burn uh, based on the setting of our thrust limit. Uh, so uh, we're going to be uh, beginning our alignment at 1 minute and 18. So let's just get ourselves uh, pre-aligned uh, so we don't have so far for the script to complete its alignment. So let's just get ourselves lined up. There we go, that's pretty good. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to warp to here. Now the advantage of using warp to here uh, rather than trying to click on this maneuver handle right in here is actually it's pretty impossible as you can see there's both the periapsis and the maneuver node handle right on top of each other and it's pretty much impossible uh, to click the maneuver node handle um, and get your three minute warning so uh, selecting warp to here uh, directly from the trajectory is probably a safer way to do it so let's do that now we've got that three minutes uh, we've still got a little bit of time, and we can just finish our lining up. There we go. Uh, and we're going to begin, the script is going to take over alignment at 1 minute and 18. So let's just 
warp forward a little. So we've got uh, just over two minutes. One minute thirty. There we go. So the script has taken over the alignment, so we should be locked on to our maneuver node now. So this is pretty much the same as locking on to. Uh, there we go. Locking on to your maneuver marker uh, when your crew is up to skill. Uh, but for the time being, we're going to have to uh, rely on our script to do that. Now the burn's going to begin at uh, 18 seconds, so we've got a few seconds left to go. So let's again use time warp to bring ourselves further forward. So there's 20 seconds. And here goes the burn. So there we go. Full throttle, but the thrust is limited, so... Uh, that's actually about 10% uh, actual throttle. So we can see that despite having a skipper engine, the Delta V is coming down pretty slowly. So we're about halfway now. We can see our orbit beginning to fold in, our blue line here. Fifteen meters per second to go. And there we go. Now it didn't quite work out the way we had anticipated, but it's still not too bad. We've got another intersection here that we can work with. Um, and we can also now use these descending nodes and ascending nodes just to make some inclination adjustments. So let's do that. So this is the descending node. So let's ascend in order to, there we go, remove our inclination. Just down a little bit. Uh, so we can now just use a tiny amount of precise node. There we go. So that's brought out that. Now we could try adjusting our position again using our radial handles. So let's see if we can bring those back together. Nope, I don't think we're going to be able to do it, are we? So let's just try again adjusting using, there we go, using our prograde and retrograde handles just to adjust oh, too far when we are going to arrive back at our intersection. So that's 10 kilometers. So let's again use precise node just to keep adjusting. Which way are we going this way? Too far. There we go, Point 0.1, even better, 100 meters, we now reckon that we can get. So this is working out pretty well. This is a pretty good uh, arrival and rendezvous uh, strategy. I think I'll probably use it, uh, use it again. Uh, so let's get our node script uh, running again. It reckons a, a trivial delta V of one meter per second uh, for only 0.2 of a second, so that's going to be a very, very small adjustment. Uh, so let's try that. So let's just get pre-aligned. Now the maneuver node is wobbling around so much because the uh, craft is quite flexible. Uh, that docking uh, port in the middle of our craft is rather flexible. There we go, we're pretty much lined up. Now, again, let's uh, warp to our uh, warp to our manoeuvre. See if we can get our handle in there. No, we can't get on the blue line. No, so let's see if we warp to manoeuvre node. There we go, we can warp to the manoeuvre node. And it'll still give us our three minutes warning. So we can see the time running down here. Script will take over alignment at one minute, so let's just time warp forward to that one minute mark. There we go. So the script has now taken over alignment again. Just see it aligning now. 
and then it's going to be a pretty trivial burn right on the dot of the maneuver node. And there it goes. Now we were a tiny bit short, so can I just run off that slight amount that we missed? There we go. It's flexing about, but I think we just about got it right. So I think it's time to warp all the way around to here, the far side of the orbit. I don't think we'll be needing our script again. There we go. So that's uh, that's us. And that is Minmus Station 1. We're a little bit away. We have drifted a little bit off our approach, but that shouldn't prove too much of a problem. I think we're doing pretty well. Let's see if we can find, there we go, 16 kilometers away. So we're approaching at approximately 30 meters a second. So let's see if we can get ourselves lined up and running directly towards our target. So let's just herd our retrograde marker towards the target retrograde marker. So just a gentle puff from our skipper engine. And this will slowly start to move towards the retrograde marker for our station. There we go, you can just see it starting to come in. There we go, bang on top. And rather than thrusting towards our station, we're just going to use time warp to help us cover this distance. So let's just go up uh, to 5 and then to 10. Just keep an eye on this to make sure it doesn't start drifting away. So it's starting to drift away down here to the bottom right. Not too much. That should be just fine. Uh, we're coming into 10 kilometer range now. And as long as these stay pretty much together, I'm happy to allow these two craft to drift together. Now it's beginning to drift a little bit too far for my liking, so let's move back across. And we ought to start killing some of our approach speed. So let's, you can see it flexing, this, this very rubbery joint in here is flexing quite badly. So there we go, we're going to herd our retrograde marker over again. Again, just a gentle tap on the throttle. Seven kilometers away now, approaching at just under 20 meters per second. Almost aligned. There we go, aligned and 6.7. So let's again warp towards it. Again, keep an eye on these two markers. Make sure they stay together. Got five kilometers. And approaching it 15 meters per second. Coming up to three kilometers. And they're pretty much staying together now. Now I'm not too worried if they do drift a little bit apart because it mainly means we won't actually be crashing into uh, Minmus Station One. So let's just get uh, uh, let's just get ready to slow down now. We're within two kilometres. You can just make out the station here and its uh, panels. So let's just start slowing down. Bring the two markers together. and start reducing our velocity. So there we go, 11 meters per second. And we're pretty much now dead on course. Now to stop the craft drifting, let's lock it to retrograde, because now really all we need to do is kill off our 11 meters per second. 
but we're going to do that when we get a little bit closer. So let's bring ourselves in again, use time warp. Coming up to, there we go, uh, one kilometer, a thousand meters. Five hundred meters. And there we go, so let's start bringing it down again. 10 meters per second, bring it down to about five meters per second and then let's just drift in. There we go. So it looks like we're drifting in a little bit above it and a little bit off to the right, which is fine, just means we won't crash into it. So we want to bring this down to about 150 meters or so, give us plenty of space uh, to maneuver. So that's 290. Coming up to 250. Now you can see the uh, greenhouse inflatable down there at the bottom, and this is where we're going to be docking. So let's again start reducing our velocity. Our relative velocity is now about three meters per second. Two meters per second, so we're still drifting in just very slightly. So let's just go to stability. I don't want this whole thing starting flexing back and forth as the uh, retrograde node starts to swing around. So there we go. So let's bring this right down. Down as good as zero. So one meter per second. Just tiny puffs. 0 0.6, 5, 4, 4. There we go. So our relative target velocity is zero and we're about 150 meters away. So all that remains is for us to dock up. So let's get ready to dock. So first things first, let's orientate ourselves uh, vertically and then separate from the uh, separate from the launch stage, which we won't do exactly vertically because otherwise we might bump into it as we adjust because we are a little bit above. So let's just set it off to one side. So let's just reach in here. First, let's control from here. There we go, control from here and then reach in here and decouple. There we go. So we've decoupled. Uh, we're all ready now. Let's get the RCS on. Uh, all ready now to dock up. So we're going to dock with that docking port down there. Let's get ourselves uh, with our docking alignment indicator all set. Now these lines are red because we are on the wrong side of the docking port. So let's get that sorted out. Let's get some vertical velocity whilst we sort out our orientation. There we go. Use this large orange marker to get ourselves lined up with the vertical axis of the station. Yeah, I don't think we're going to crash into our uh, transfer stage. We can also use this marker to rotate ourselves around so all the parts are aligned nicely on our station. So there we go. And I think it's about time we went down a little bit further. And we can start moving ourselves towards the docking port as we sink below. Just double check where our stage is. There we go. Safely away. You can see our target highlighted there, 117 meters away. So we should soon be below the level of the docking port. 
and we can arrest our vertical velocity. Here we go, lines turn green, so let's arrest our vertical velocity. There we go, we're just going down very, very slightly. There we go, see us uh, orbiting around Minmus there. Let's slow ourselves down, we're going uh, rather quickly towards our target. So let's just bring our yellow marker a little bit more towards the center. And as we see these green lines get more central, we should start seeing ourselves get the magnetic effect of the two docking ports. Let's bring ourselves a little bit further towards this line. Start slowing down, I think. As Soon as these two green lines are over the crosshairs, we know we are directly below our target docking port and we can just thrust forward. Bring ourselves underneath. We're still a little bit off to one side. So we're almost underneath it now. Green crosshairs pretty much lined up, so let's thrust forward. There we go. You can see the retrograde marker has now turned to the prograde marker, which means we're now going forward at 0.09 of a meter per second, but we're drifting off to one side. I think the magnetism is now taken over. And thump! There we go. Excellent! So that is another uh, module attached. Let's get our panels out. Let's extend our radiators. There we go. So let's recap what we have. We have our uh, original uh, command center attached. Uh, we have our habitation ring, which that to combined uh, completed the contract we originally had. We have an aeroponics module, which is converting mulch into uh, organics with the aid of the greenhouse inflatable. And we now have our Kerbitat module, uh, which we can now start, and our Kerbitat module, with the aid of the habitat ring, will be converting those organics into vital life supporting supplies. So that really completes what is a mostly uh, self sufficient base. It has the minimum number of modules to complete its basic processes from mulch from uh, Kerbals, in this case Bill and Valentina, and turn that back into vital life support supplies. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>
Thank you.